I think my father 100% enables my sisters, and I think he's even enabled me. Michael's been paying for Shane's apartment for almost four years, and it was supposed to be just a temporary situation until she got back on her feet. While Wade was growing up, if he ever got into trouble, Michael paid lawyers so that Wade didn't have to suffer consequences. In 2015, Shelby was in a sober living environment, and she was doing awesome. She threatened him that she would run away to the streets, so my dad let her back home. Dr. Phil would say that Michael parents out of guilt. I believe that he's making up for the death of Kelsey. I'm very sorry for your loss, by the way. Uh, Michael is now trying to keep his other drug-addicted daughter, Shane, from doing the same thing. And his logic in this is, I at least know where she is. Mm -hmm. I at least know she's not out un under a bridge somewhere or committing crimes that can get her killed or whatever. And so it's a lot easier for me, who's removed from the situation, to say that's not the thing to do than it is for a parent who's talking about their own child to find the strength to take a hard line. I, I totally get that. Yeah. But in reality, is he really, in fact, contributing to putting her on the same path as the daughter he's lost? Let's take a look. Our family is in a minefield, and we are about to explode. I don't know how to fix them. When there is sobriety in the family, it is such a beautiful thing, but it's rare. I think I enabled my children by giving them too much and not saying no enough. I feel responsible for the way they've turned out with the drug abuse. My daughter Shane is on a methadone maintenance program and she uses heroin along with that and that has escalated tremendously. I'm in a continuous state of mourning and fear, fear of losing another child. I've been sober for 38 years from alcohol. I'm under uh, doctors prescribe for sedatives, and I take no other drugs. I take the sedatives to help me cope with the grief from my daughter's death. My son Wade thinks that the whole family needs help. I'm not going to take a lecture from Wade, who has put me through the ringer. I love Wade, but he really can't start throwing stones. Look, we got to make a decision here. Uh, you know, any time that I I'm gonna deal with somebody that is on drugs. If you go back and look at the, all of the interviews, interventions, interactions I've done, I always talk to the family first before I talk to the addict. Mm -hmm. You know that? And yes. you know why? Because I'm assessing what resources I have. Mm -hmm. Because if I get them out here and family members start backpedaling, making excuses for them, buying into their, their fiction of life and all, that just gets in my way. And so sometimes I just don't have those people out here. That's why I'm talking to you guys right now, because look, you've buried one daughter and you say that you're taking these sedatives and medications because you're grieving. You want to know what I think? I think you're taking them because you're not grieving. Mm -hmm. I, yep. You haven't done the grief work. You haven't faced this situation and dealt with it. I'm not someone that believes you put yourself in a chemical straitjacket so you don't feel pain. I don't think you dull your senses so you don't deal with the realities of life. There are times that I believe that medications can help but you say, I'm taking these sedatives, but the, I'm not on any drugs, only what my doctor gives me. Right. Whether you buy those drugs in an alley or you get them from a doctor, they can be as addictive no matter where you get them. They can be as conscious altering no matter where you get them. The only difference is if you get them from your physician, you at least know what's in them. What, what, what is it your physician has it's a, you? a benzo, and I take it at night after 9 or 10 o'clock, just to, at the end of the day, I never, ever take it during the day. 